Alright guys, hello and welcome to Critical Legends. The game will be down in the description if you want to go and play it. The game is your typical Critical Adventure remake, and this game, if you don't know, is basically an adventure action game. You can play with friends or you can play solo. Players can go out and explore the vast world, and in the vast world there are a ton of enemies, items, and bosses that you can explore and battle. All of the enemies and bosses do have their own drops, and each item can benefit you greatly. Since this is a new player guide, we're gonna go through all of the basics, everything you need to know, and the fastest way that you can get right into the action. I will make note of a few items, but for the most majority of the items, we're just gonna skip and breeze through. If you love adventuring, I would highly recommend that you go out and adventure and find more items than what I showcase here. When the game starts, you'll be given 5 items. To access these items, you're gonna want to press P on your keyboard or the little icon in the bottom right hand corner. Click on the green box and you'll see all of these items. These are pages. They're a small introduction to the game. They go over combat, they go over classes, evolutions, world events, saving or save locations along with equipping items. For starters, there's a few areas you're gonna want to get familiar with. One of them is the statue, the gold glowing chest. This works as a bank for all of your classes. The arsenal. This is where you're going to be able to swap out items. The dude with the exclamation mark. This is a save point. And the shop. All of these can be found all around the world, commonly. They're used as basically campsites to swap out items, purchase some potions or some items you might need later on. Or you can just go over to one of these, look for the glowing chest, swap out your class. There are a few chests around the starting area. You're only gonna mainly want to grab three of them. The two beta chests, which are the glowing blue chests, along with this chest over by a boat. The active ability is what you're gonna want the most. It is punch. For 25 mana, you will deal 10 damage to an enemy. This is really great if you're starting out and you want to get a few levels before you adventure. You can use this about 4 times and then your mana will deplete as a level 0 player. One of the very first items you're going to want is going to be an item that boosts your mobility. Luckily, the traveler boots are very close by and you can get them really quickly. Following this path will be the quickest and easiest way to get the traveler boots. Just be very careful inside the cave and around the enemies. They're higher tier and we don't have that much health. The game is very very large so any mobility will help you greatly as well as it'll help in battle to avoid attacks. Due to the size of the game being very very large we're gonna change up our spawn location. Follow the route that is currently being displayed and we'll be in an area that connects to a large amount of areas in the game. All of the boats in this area work as teleporters and we can easily fast travel to anywhere we want. From here we'll go over to Trading Sky and take the stairway all the way down to the Slime King. Over here we can get a few items. Barrage, Self Heal, Slime King Crown, and slime in a jar. Barrage is going to be an upgrade from punch, self heal is going to be our carry, and the crown is going to give us a little bit more mobility. Slime in a jar is the only item that is practically useless. Everything else, you're going to need it for later on. The healing scroll is possibly one of the best items in the game. Considering that it runs off of mana and magic, and the cost is based off of your magic value, anyone can use it despite being a different class. On top of this, the healing scroll is also abusable. There's no cooldown. So if you're in a battle, just use it a bunch of times to heal all the way back up. The next important area that you're going to want to go to is Blub's Castle. Just hop onto the neon green boat and it'll teleport you over there. Despite the name and the location, we're actually not going to the castle. We're going to go down into the forest area, but not even into the forest. We're going into the outskirts shoreline. Way out over by the shoreline is going to be a chest and further over into the next biome is going to be another chest. These two chests are going to be majorly important. 
they're going to give you the Heart Fruit and the Mana Regen Scroll. The Heart Fruit gives you 500 health and 500 mana from just one item. The Mana Regen Scroll is going to give you a 1% mana regen every single second. So combining these two, it should be obvious how broken it gets. If you want to see how broken these items are, I actually released a video earlier today fighting a tier 8 boss as a level 0. You can check out this video with the eye icon in the top right of this video or in the link in the description. Let's just say that was the easiest 8 levels I've ever gotten. The last major item you're going to want is the Queen Bee Soul. This is going to be pretty easy to get to. If you're in the starting zone, just go forward past the archer statue. If you did save your new spot over to the Sky Island area, then just go to the woods, get out of the woods, go to the main pathway, straight forward past the archer statue, and you're there. There are a few items in this area as well, such as honeycomb and honey shield. All of the bees do drop honey as well, it's a consumable item. All of this can greatly be ignored. The Queen Bee Soul is going to be our small boost. It'll boost your damage and your magic by a little bit. It's alright for what it is, it's definitely better than a few other things. Some small stuff that I forgot to mention, every time you level up you're gonna want to press L on your keyboard and it'll pop up a little menu. You can mess around with your stats. Don't worry if you screw up your stats like let's say you go warrior but then you're like oh hey magic looks fun how about I go into magic. Well you can just reset your stats. If you have enough reputation just press the button in the top of this menu and it'll reset your stats and then you can reapply all of your stat points. Another thing I forgot to mention is the ignite scroll. This scroll is pretty good but it's definitely not one of the better spells. I still would recommend it as some of the other spells could be costly or hard to obtain. A main example of a difficult to reach scroll is going to be the Chaos Strike scroll. This spell applies poison and fire to an enemy. It is a really good scroll to get. This is pretty much everything that you need to know when starting the game. This will majorly boost any player into fighting harder enemies right away. This will help gain EXP and gold very, very quickly. I left out a huge amount of items, most of them being useless, but a lot of them also being endgame items. This is a new player guide, so I would definitely encourage you guys to go out and explore and have some fun. Some things that I didn't mention were the black market and evolutions. Weapons can evolve. They require specific materials, but they can evolve. I mainly left this out because it didn't feel like something new players would need right away. So I hope this video has helped you enough and if you have any questions put them down in the comments and I'll try and help you. If they're very specific like how do I get a tier 4 gunner, I'm sorry, I might not be able to help you. Hopefully someone else in the comments will be able to help you but I might not have that information. If you do want a little bit more information, I will be linking the Trello for this game in the description. Go check it out, it might have some helpful information for you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video, I hope I could help, and that's gonna be it for the video. I will see ya.